Hey everybody, we're Living Arts here, and welcome to Pester Quest, and happy Halloween! We actually got a special one this today. That didn't come out right. But, <laughs> I did record this once before, and I found out the audio was messed up. So sadly, you can't get my first impressions of this. Oh, but it's a good one. <laughs> Volume 6, Route 1. Fucking cannons, how do they work? We get to see Gam Z. I'm so excited. Uh, first things first, you deliver Carcat into the arms of a giant white crab, which strikes you as totally normal and a safe thing to do. You're really beginning to get the hang of this zap situation. For instance, you are now capable of utilizing it without unleashing a lengthy exposition on the values of interpersonal relationships. You could just go. Lucky too, since when you drop Carcat off at his place, he does not look in the mood for philosophy. More for crawling into bed and sleeping for a week. Same boy. You don't blame him. Dave and John are nice kids, but they do require a high level of buy-in to talk to. Ha ha, jokes, because people usually skip them. Since you have a memory like a steel friendship trap and not like a goldfish, you recall that there's another possible bro in the area. What? Had Carquette called that kid? He lost his shit at the thought of meeting Macarena? Macaroni? You zap over to Macaroni's house. This time you aim for the yard and not the broom closet. You find yourself outside a large sandstone castle at the edge of a dark, sprawling ocean. And there's very few houses around, so... <laughs> You'd have said it was abandoned if it wasn't for the lights in the window and the obviously open door, which is probably not the best idea for safety with giant robots and killer people ro roaming around, so I mean. Standing at the tide line is some sort of Halloween decoration. A scarecrow made entirely of st- Oh shit, I forgot about the whispers. I need to move that away from my ears. <laughs> Okay, a scarecrow made entirely of sticks and hair and a pair of oversized gray paint pants. Wait, they probably don't even have Halloween here. It's already spooky enough every day, a nocturnal world can't even fuck with night holidays. The scarecrow throws a rock into the surf, winding up his long, thin arm as a whole production. Although the motion is surprisingly fluid, you edge closer, not wanting to alarm, but needing to move the plot along at a reasonable clip, you clear your throat. The boy scarecrow does the laziest double take you have ever seen. It's like he's on half speed. Motherfucker, are you lost? I don't know what voice to give Gamzee, honestly. I didn't know before. <laughs> That's a little forward, not that you aren't hip to all the choices trends that the kids are on. You have absolutely no problem with some random teen just swearing at you out of the blue. It's absolutely fine. In fact, you love it. Makara, that's what his name was. We just randomly remembered it somehow. You have a look at the ocean? You don't really get your ass ducks going on it. Well, yeah, you're doing that right now, actually. Since the ocean is right in front of you, and it's very hard not to see it at least out of the corner of your eye. Oh dang! My throat. Oh, oh shit. I'm a little sick, so this is gonna be weird. It's gonna come out badly, probably, when I do his voice, so. Well, for sure, you were someone's little lost Lucis on account of you being white all over. Not my old goat, for sure. Oh. That old bastard's never once showed his ugly skull to share a pie. Oh, I'm sorry, Gibbsy. The tide creeps up the beach, and you make an automatic step back. The water looks normal, and the car is up to his shins in the surf. But you still don't trust like that. You can teleport, but that doesn't mean you want your toes burned off by alien salt water or whatever the fuck. What about you, stranger? You ever get down on a hot, warm plate of gooey mess? Uh... Bye, motherfucker, I got one in the oven. Oh, how silly of you. You love pie. 
You love it so much more than any weird shit you thought he was talking about. <laughs> he grins and oh god, horror opens up a pit in your stomach and as his skin cracks. Before you realize that's makeup. He's got face paint on. You guess kind of like a clown thing going on? It tracks. The big pants, the crazy hair, etc. That's actually kind of fucking weird, but really not as weird as it should be. Like everything since you began this roll-licking friendship romp. Almost said Rick rolling again. This new information feels like remembering rather than learning. But right now all you really care about learning or remembering is that sweet pie the kid mentioned. Hell yeah. You got your pan all at where it's supposed to be. In your sack. Gamzy. Come again? Gamzy. Bless you. My name, motherfucker. Oof. For a second, the kid's vacant stare sharpens. His gray eyes are like looking down a long, empty corridor, but for just the briefest moment, you think you see something lurking at the end of it. Something angry, and then it's gone. Gamzy brings you inside his hive, which is lopsided and shakes when the wind blows. Whoever designed it has definitely got their architecture degree online. It also smells a lot like weed. <laughs> you take a step into the living room. Honk! Oh, Jesus Christ, there was like 40 little honk horns strewn across the floor in a pattern that makes it absolutely inevitable that you will step on most of them on the way to the couch. <laughs> You give up after a few of the careful, a few seconds of careful hopping, and just honk your way across the room. It's a goose party up in here. Oh yeah, brother, make that music. Sometimes it all just gets too much to contain. You know what I'm saying? Not really, Gamzy, but you do you. Gamzy sticks his head around the corner. You assume what must be the kitchen. He's got flour on his nose, and he thought he said pie was already in the oven. What's he using flour for? The music builds up, don't it? It's like a miracle. Like a little ball of snot. What's all caught up in your suck fingers? <laughs> uh, you actually have no idea what he's talking about, and you're pretty sure that's not your fault. A bunch of cluttering and banging interrupts your thoughts. Dear God, what is he doing in there? How hard is he baking? Then you realize it isn't coming from the kitchen. It's coming from a different door. A closet door. What even is that? <laughs> we traveled back in time. Oh, fuck. Oh, it's, it's you and Carcat. You must have time traveled without even meaning you when you zapped here. Damn it, you thought you were getting a hang of this. Obviously not. But how do you respond to this absolutely unforeseen turn of events? Open the door. Let Gamzee open the door. Well, we don't want to do a paradox now, do we? Let Gamzee open the door. Figuring this is the best way to prevent a paradox, you wait until the rocket gets loud enough to alert your host. What's all that? You shrug and open your eyes real wide to show just how innocent you are. This is a total mystery that absolutely needs solving. Oh, hey, hold up, my brother. I'm hearing something in the scrub cubby. Some squeak beast what's all got itself trapped. The noise in the closet breaks off just as Gamzee throws open the door. Yep. Same place as before, other you and Carquette must be shouting at each other back in this hive. Well, he'll be doing most of the shouting, it really is a mess in there. Shit. Damn, little monsters, skid it off! Yeah, weird. You have no idea where they went, and you're totally sure it was not a friend of his who flipped out at the sheer sound of his voice. That would be ridiculous. Oh, no doubt. You're glad you agreed on that. Oh, and speaking of which, you mentioned that you have a friend in common. Carcat? Small, shouty? 
Gimsy cracks into such a wide grin, you're surprised his face doesn't turn inside out. Yeah, that thing is my best fucking friend. As close as two wrigglers, what slid that out of the mother grub's frumpy ass together. Gross, but okay. We get our rap on. Rap, like actual rap? Crackhead doesn't really strike you as the rapping type, like, at all. Not so much as you notice. But I know he's got that music inside him somewhere. All wrapped up under his skin, just waiting for a real motherfucking brother to rip it out. Oh, that's incredibly romantic, but also the absolutely creepiest shit you have ever heard. Oh, hell yes. An ungodly amount of steam issues from the kitchen, like someone baking in a cartoon. Whatever it is, smells amazing, sugary, with just a hint of sharpness to it. Do Gamzy ever say what kind of pie he's making? Miracle pie, sister. Sister? Miracle pie. Oh nice, miracle flavor. Sounds great and not at all like it might burn the roof of your mouth. Off. Gamzy emerges from the kitchen, the sweet smell getting stronger as he comes closer. He isn't carrying any plates or forks or whatever, so you guess you're just going to eat with your hands? You look down at your grubby little paws. When was the last time you washed these silly things? You are disgusting. This feels like I'm being judged, like the whole genocide run of Undertale. <laughs> but then you get a look at the pie and you realize the germs are really going to be the least of your worries. It's thick and gelatinous and green. Neon green. Poison control green. Like clip art of something toxic. You are absolutely sure that whatever that pie is made of, humans are not meant to eat it. Probably not trolls either. Gamzy sits down next to you, stretching out his long, skinny legs onto the coffee table, knocking over a stack of comics and a couple empty Fago bottles. Yikes. This does not make you feel any better about his ability to make good nutritional choices. You ask Gamby, Gamzy, as politely as you are able, what kind of pie it is. Oh dang brother, a nutrimentary. Never gives away his secret ingredient. All you need to know is this is the good shit. You want to see the miracles the way I see them? I know you do. I can hear it in your voice. I can see it in your sea stalks. This is the shit that is going to put you all up the way over the top. Gamzy gives you that one look. You know the one. When your friend tells you that they got some deliriously dank shit that they've been just aching to share with you, that's a real thing that happens. <laughs> it is absolutely drugs. This is a drug pie. Consume the drug pie. <laughs> yeah, we're probably gonna eat- yeah, we, we're, we're gonna eat the drug pie. You know what? Fuck it. Your magic. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> You scoop out a big green glowing glob of poison pie. It's so gooey and thick it almost slides right out of your hand. You manage to get a little bit of it into your mouth. It punches you right in the taste buds. So sweet your teeth ache and without any discernible texture. Just goop that slowly fills your mouth and coats your throat. Wow. This sure is a tactical experience. It doesn't taste Bad? Just sort of like you swallowed a big, sweet mouthful of nausea hits you in a wave and every nerve ricochets tight. Yep. It is definitely not meant for whatever kind of creature you are. Your body wants to reject it. You lean over the arm of the couch and prepare to give this volume an additional content warning. But the feeling passes. And not only does it pass, it is accompanied by a rising sweep of euphoria. It shivers up from your stomach and into your brainstem. You let out an unintentional sigh of happiness and relax back into the couch. Wow, you feel so great right now. Holy shit, drugs are awesome. You want to do them all the time. No wonder Gamzee was so intent on getting this pie finished. 
If you were him, and you knew this secret to the wonders of the universe, you wouldn't ever eat anything else. Ever. A long finger taps you on the shoulder. More, motherfucker. He offers you the pie plate, and you eagerly dig your fingers in. It's getting all over the couch, and your face. But you don't care. You just want more of that perfect, contented feeling. Gamzy watches you with dreamy approval. Somehow the two of you end up in the supply closet. You aren't really sure why, it just felt like a good idea to go in there. Possibly to investigate whatever it was that was making a bunch of silly noise that just a few minutes ago. Oh, you know what it was. It was you. You and Carcat. You guys came to visit Gamzy one time, but Carcat was out. You'll try harder next time. Ha <laughs> good try, motherfucker. You're not pulling my stem that easy. My nubby little brother hasn't been anywhere near my motherfucking hive. I've tried to get him over here again and again, you know? But he's all got this hate on uh, for face-to-face -face hangouts. I get that. I really do. Not like you. You got your motherfucking pan blown right the fuck open. You're like me, my sister. You're wide open to the motherfucking miracles. You tell Gamzee that he's totally right. You are so ready and open for whatever miracle comes along. But no, seriously, if you wanted the two of you could go visit Karkat right now, he's probably sleeping off this trip to an alien planet. But you could wait. Or just zap forward in time a little bit, that's a thing you could do. Oh, for real? Why didn't you say so then, motherfucker? Zap us on out of here. Sure, right away. Anything you want, best friend. Gamzy gives you another of those why messy grins, like he can't contain the joy at the thoughts of being someone's best friend. You totally sympathize. You can't actually remember how to use your magic powers right now. You think it's possible you're a little too high. You don't even remember how you came to be lying on the filthy closet floor and looking up at the filthy closet ceilings. Shouldn't you try to keep the place with your cleaning supplies a little, you know, clean? Along with that clean bottle? And that horn? And the wall? And just everything? <laughs> No worries, my brother. There isn't any rush. I got my certainty on that one day we're all gonna get together in one big horn pile. My boy Carcat, T Dog, Equius, that nasty surline bitch that's always mad as hell. Everybody. We're all climbing up to the clouds together. You know, you don't know who some of those people are, but that's okay. You're confident that they'd all make amazing friends. And you can't wait to climb up into the sky with them. What will you do once you get up there? We ride the Dark Carnival all the way to paradise, my brother. The Dark Carnival? That sounds familiar. Somehow. You feel like you've heard of it before. My heart, Caraco! Oh, I should hope so, motherfucker. Anybody who has got any kind of head for religious dogma at all has heard this shit. I knew you were a real one. Oh yeah, for sure, you were the realest, but like, imagine you weren't as real as you could be. What would you tell some dumb asshole who had no idea what C Gamzy was talking about? The Dark Carnival is where the path leads to, my brother. Back in the old days, the righteous got their blood poured out when their time came. All that purple paint in the ringmaster's circle. But nowadays, it's more of like a metaphor and shit. When a motherfucker dies, his soul is all uh, ruptured up from his corpse meat, right? And that soul's got all up and go somewhere, don't it? It's not about to just float around untethered. So he rides on up to the carnival, where it gets all right and properly judged. 
to see whether it's been a good bitch or a naughty motherfucker. <laughs> I love Gamzee's text. Anyways, that's how the miracles work. Right, right, God, that sounds amazing. I really hope Gamzee gets there one day. Oh, my heart. Something jagged slams up against the haze of drug contentment. You feel it like a booming knock on the inside of your consciousness. You remember a face. Gamzee's face. Not exactly. No, not quite. Oh, my heart. It's a face with makeup, but it's younger, kinder, more vulnerable. You remember this. This is a friend. You remember you had friends. You remember a clown. With a monumental effort, you force yourself into a sitting position. Gamzee is still splayed out on the floor, totally gone. You have to figure this out. For a split second, you had it. You shake your head, trying to clear it. You stagger up. Gamzee makes a sleepy noise and rolls onto his side. It seems every time we start to remember something, or we get close to hearing about things, something stops us. You stagger back into the living room, feeling your way across the wall until you find an ablution trap. You locate the sink and splash some water on your face, trying to focus enough to concentrate, but not enough to lose this thread. Somehow you know that if you become too aware of yourself, you are going to completely forget everything again. It's almost like someone wants you to forget. Forget all of your friends and forget your past adventures. You close your eyes and picture that friendly clown face. The name drifts across your mind. Almost close enough to snatch. Caraco. Ah, my heart, my child. Zap. All of your other trips through the narrative have been instantaneous. One second you're in a place, and the next you're in another. This time, the air feels warm and gelatinous. Like trying to run while waist deep in water. The drug pie could just be fucking with your powers, but you know in the core of you, that isn't right. You are where you aren't supposed to be, and something here knows you're trespassing. Something here is awake, and it sees you. When your body goes through a series of shivers not unlike when you first tasted the pie, some distant layer of you knows that whatever you are experiencing is wrong and not meant to be seen by anyone, as if somehow you've gotten a glimpse into the subatomic level. Your vision stretches out in a long, empty corridor, and at the other end is... Ah... Uh, You slingshot back to Gamzee's hive, hitting the floor with what feels like every inch of your body. God, how can you fall on your ass and your head at the same time? How is that legal? Even worse, you appear to have sobered up so much faster than you have any right to. The high is broken like a fever, and you are sweating through your trendy colored shirt. Also, that T-posing person. Funny enough, kind of reminds me of Markiplier's little one from the shirt and also the video of a heist with Markiplier. So there's a tether that you could try and dig into. You turn. Gamzee has somehow moved himself to the couch while you were doing whatever it was. Trying to throw yourself into part of the narrative you don't have permission to see. He looks significantly less stoned than before, too. Where'd you go at, motherfucker? Oh, uh, you just tried to pop in to visit someone? Someone you thought you remembered from your past. And it went wrong. Somehow you're just getting the image of a T-posing figure, which is absolutely absurd. 
damn. That's some deep nonsense right there. Some righteous fucking noise. Yeah, you guess so. Probably just the drugs, though. Gamzy looks at you through slitted, hazy eyes, and you realize that trying to explain anything to him when he's in this dream state isn't going to do any good. Just a fever dream. And that's probably exactly what it was. Shit, maybe this is what the kids refer to as a bad trip. Is this what Gamzy does? Just sits in his hive all the time and gets high? Well, that's a perfectly respectable way to deal with a help place like Alternia, but... God, it makes you sad. All these kids you've met so far make you so incredibly sad. There. Now you went and bummed yourself out. You're exhausted. You really aren't above doing the least amount of work for the highest possible reward here. You shrug and tell him that probably what you experienced was a miracle. Gamzee's beautific smile makes it all better. Victory! Victory, Screech! <laughs> Okay, so, we're gonna start a paradox. Let's go. Open the door. You spring up to answer the door because that's what any good guest would do while their host is busy fighting a pie. You honk your way over, making more music on the way. Miracles or whatever. You wonder what you're going to say when you see yourself. You'll probably be pretty surprised. Up close, the door is sort of warm. Not temperature-wise, morning. Existential way. A narrative weight hangs around this door, and when you touch it, a tingling heat shoots up your fingers. Man, this door is great. You don't want anything more than to just open this door. Shit, you love this door. Just doors in general, actually. Fucking amazing. You love to open them up and be in one place, and then walk through them and be in another. You twist the handle. You are forcibly returned to the start screen. Try again! Nice. <laughs> Dare to resist drugs and alcohol. You take a deep breath and prepare to stand up to peer pressure. You tell Gamzy that you think you'll pass on the pie. Whoa, for real? Nobody's ever turned down a bite before. Really, how many people have he offered it to? Gamzy grins. Well, motherfuck, you got me there. No fear, brother, no fear. You gotta be all doing what you're feeling. No way I'm about to hush a brother's flow when it comes to all their personal preferences or whatever. Oh, thank God he's isn't going to think you're uncool for not doing his drug pie. You can't exactly recall where you've picked up the idea that alternative drugs are not a good idea, but you're pretty sure it's right. Maybe just a good general rule of thumb, avoid alien controlled substances. Or possibly all alien substances. Maybe it would be bad for you even if it wasn't drug by. Your internal autonomy is still a mystery to you. Actually, Gamzee's taking this so well that you feel emboldened to go further. Push a little harder. Man, you are really getting brazen with this after-school special shit. <laughs> you suggest to Gamzee that just maybe he shouldn't eat the pie either. He raises both eyebrows and gives you a slow blink. Looking from the pie to you and back again. He looks absolutely flabbergasted at the idea. Hasn't anyone ever mentioned to him that he should be careful of what he eats? Not even Karkat? Karkat absolutely seems like the kind of guy who would want to micromanage his friends' lives. I feel like that is offensive, but at the same time, I mean accurate? Might have said a thing or two. Once or maybe two times. Does Gamzee ever think about following his good friend's advice? Oof, 
Gimsy freezes with one long-fingered hand reaching for the pie. You can practically see the gears turning in his pan. Head. In his head. Let's not get to the lingo part. <laughs> you catch another flicker of that flat, effectless menace behind his eyes. Then he splits into another big, sloppy grin. Fuck it. Gamzee rises eerily to his feet, like he's on marionette strings, almost without bending his knees. Picking up the pie, he shuffles across the rumpus block and, opening the window, he makes and holds eye contact as he throws the pie out the window. Oh! Uh, okay. Well, that's one way to get rid of it. But what about the pie plate? More where that came from. Anything I want, I just enter it into the computer and it appears outside the hive a couple hours later. Fucking miracles, man. Or maybe just same day delivery? Is there a troll Amazon? Troll on? Troll is on? Troll. Troll Zion. That sounds like a name of an anime character. Oh well. Gamzy lets out a creaky laugh. It makes you a little nervous and can't quite pinpoint why. Slow down, brother. You're talking all the deep motherfucking heresies today. Turning down a perfectly good pie, what could have got us all and truly seen the glories what's the Messiah's put on this planet. Don't take away my miracles, too. Well, you didn't make him throw the pie out the window. You just made a suggestion. He didn't have to listen to you. No, no, you got the right of it. We'll do it your way. You never know. The old girl might come back for once. He never likes it when I fly high on pie. Well, if he's sure. Oh, shit. Gimsy looks at you from across the room, silhouetted against the window, like a black spot on the moon. And you think you may have made a mistake. You aren't exactly sure why, just... Something in the back of your head is shouting at you. Maybe you'll... Check. Just to be sure. So when Gamzee lopes back into the kitchen, maybe to throw more shit passive-aggressively out the window, you zap forward. Just a little while. A couple of days. The house is quiet, but everything looks mostly the same. When you listen, though, you hear a steady thump, thump, thump. If you didn't know better, you might say it was someone banging something against drywall. For instance, their head. The sound rattles through the stone of the hive and builds along the scaffolding of your body. With mounting dread, you zap forward a few days. The hive is a wreck. It wasn't exactly a showroom before, but now there are three times as many honkhorns, and fago bottles overflow the table. The couch bleeds stuffing from three long gouges. The TV is shattered, and every mirror in the house is broken. Every shiny surface slashed past recognition. It's like someone didn't want to see themselves. Gamzee? Oh god, what happened? Oh shit. If you zapped Karkat's hive, he knows Gamzee. He'll be able to tell you. Oh god. Red. Red everywhere. On Karkat's bedroom walls, the floor, even arching up to the ceiling. Karkat's red, red blood. You've never gotten a chance to talk to him about it. Your stomach curls in on itself, and you fall forward onto your knees, rutching onto the carpet. You haven't had any of the pie, so nothing comes up. Oh shit. Kanaya's room is in far greater disarray. She looks like she put up much more of a fight than Karkat had. There are great gouts of jade blood over the bolts of clothes and drafting table. 
but it's joined by deep splashes of royal purple. Kanaya's stop glows sickly in the dim room. A smiley face with a round nose is painted in blood on the screen. Beneath it, an instant message flashes. Fussy fangs, what the fuck? You can't ignore me forever, Miriam. I doubt you could even do it for one night. Hmm. Huh? Hmm. Hmm. The cursor flashes. Green purple ooze on the keys. Still wet. Oh god, he's gone after AG2. You have to do something. You appear in a tall stone room. You've never been here before. Or maybe you have. Maybe you've already made good friends with this particular troll. It really depends on which option you chose at the beginning of the volume. I didn't, and now we're breaking canon. God, why did you think that? Why isn't your brain working? What the fuck is wrong with you? You feel like you know all of this, but not. Like you watched it all happen to someone else. From the distance, you hear a telltale honk. Ice sheets up your spine. Honk! <sighs> that is the most cursed noise you've ever heard in your life. Jesus fuck, you are going to have nightmares filled with brass instrumentation, provided you don't die immediately. Honk! Oh, hey there, motherfucker. You're late. Oh, hey, Gamzee, you sure, uh... You sure look totally fucked up. Green and crimson paint his shirt. Splashed up his arms to his elbows. It's like fucking Christmas up in here. Three deep purple gouges intersect his face, still bleeding freely. Shit, dude. You should have kept doing your drugs if this was the alternative. Talk about an overreaction. Overreaction is a no fucking reaction. A little apparent speck of warm meat. This is the true God's judgment. He came to me, motherfucker. He spoke his words in my ear. He's the only one that's ever bothered to say motherfucking truths to me. Who came to him? Who was speaking truth? Don't worry. You'll meet him soon. Honk! 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 Oh god. <laughs> Game over. Yes, so that was that. Come on, like, subscribe, and listen with it. I'm gonna check out the links in the description below and all of that. That was Pet Star Quest, and that was a great Halloween special. Honestly, I love Gamzee. I still love Gamzee. I'm not quite sure about his sprite, but it's kind of growing on me. It kind of reminds me of Nagato Kamieda, and I love him. I love both of my psychotic boys. Anyways, <laughs> keep gaming.